<laughs> so, with the many saints of Newark, Alan Taylor and David Chase's prequel to The Sopranos has been out for a while now, and fans of the show have been watching the film, discussing what they think, and coming to their own conclusions as to what they think of the movie. I watched and reviewed the film a few days before it came out in the States, which was the 1st of October, and as I mentioned in my review, I was someone who went into the film mildly curious more than anything, even as a big Sopranos fan, because I didn't think we needed a Sopranos film in any way, shape or form. I went in with practically zero expectations. After watching the film once in cinema, and re-watching a few scenes here and there, I liked the movie. I thought it was good. Not great, and not terrible. There's a lot that could be improved, could be changed, but it's one of those films where the more you think about it, the more you appreciate it. I went in with an open mind, I went in rooting for the film, and I came out overall satisfied. For me at least anyway. I'm looking at reviews and reactions from hardcore Sopranos fans, and though it can be difficult to gauge the overall consensus of the Sopranos fandom, because the angry minority in any situation tend to be often the most vocal, but I would say Sopranos fans at this stage are disappointed with the movie and their estimation of David Chase as a filmmaker just fucking plummeted. So let's have a casual discussion about the film. Consider this an extension of my review for the movie. It will be worth checking out that video before you watch this one as I'll try my best not to go over the same things I talked about there. Spoiler alert obviously. but. When you're reviewing a film that almost everyone else hasn't seen, you tend to hold back on certain things, because I don't want to put things in your head which gives you a preconceived notion about the film before watching it. For example, I thought the acting in the film was great, in particular the guys who played Dickie, Livia and both the actors who played Tony Soprano, but it was a little more difficult to swallow the performances of some of the other actors. The big one is Silvio, whose performance is a bit of an enigma. On one hand, the guy nailed the mannerisms and speech patterns of Stephen Van Zandt's Silvio. He was as good as you could possibly be as young Silvio. On the other hand, the guy was so over the top with the grimacing and the almost campy walking style that at times he came off as a Saturday Night Live sketch actor. He was so over the top, but I think the actor couldn't win in any case because Silvio in the original series was also over the top. Maybe the actor could have toned it down and we could have it in our mind that Silvio's mannerisms became more amplified the older he got, but then the actor would be criticised for not being like Van Zant enough, so like I said, he can't win. These are the many kinds of issues that come about when making a prequel to something classic, but overall I liked the acting in the film and Silvio didn't bother me. The characters of Silvio, Paulie and Pussy bothered me more than the acting of them, mainly because they weren't in the film that much to make much of a difference to it, only Silvio really gets a proper scene where he was in the limelight. So there's so much focus on nabbing these characters, getting the likes of Pussy and Pauly right, and then they're hardly in the film, so what's the point of all the palaver? Why not give them expanded roles, or better yet, even more reduced roles, and bring in some other players into the mix? Because are we really to believe that Silvio and Pauly were around for so long with hardly anyone else in the fray of this crew? Why not expand on some of the other characters? Joey Diaz, for example. I thought he was fantastic in the film as Buddha Bumpincero, but who is this guy? What's he about? What's his story? He's there and then he gets shot in the face, and you can point to pretty much all of the main cast and have similar complaints. They're not expanded on enough. They're not explored enough. I was sad that Dickie died in the film, because it means we won't see his character expanded upon in the future. Johnny Boy was practically a non-character, absent for much of the film though I suppose that could be a metaphor for his absence in Tony's life. The actors were great, they all did their job, but all over the park are similar issues. I can imagine the actors reading the script and parroting Christopher's famous line from the show, Where's my arc? This brings me to the main issue with the film, which is the fact that it's a film in the first place. I do wonder what stopped the filmmakers making it into a show, whether they just wouldn't get the funding, whether it would be forever compared to The Sopranos, whether they just didn't want to do it. But The Many Saints of Newark should have been a TV show. It should have been a limited TV series of about 10 or 13 episodes or something. Think of everything that could have been explored, expanded upon. The Harold storyline, Dickie and his dad, Dickie and Tony, Tony and his parents, Tony and his youth, the DeMeo crew, 
Sylvia, Paulie and Pussy. Even that hairdresser storyline. Heck, we could have even seen Richie and that animal Blondetto. They could have done so much with more time, because that really is the only major sin of the film in my opinion, that there wasn't enough time, and David Chase's insistence that the film be under two hours long means we miss out on so much nuance and richness, because the film has an impossible task of introducing new characters, establishing older ones, and then rushing through the story all the way until Dickie's death. And what story do you want to tell? Do you want to explore the psyche of Dickie Moltisanti? Do you want to tell a Tony Soprano origin story? Do you want to show Harold breaking away from the mob and establishing his own thing? You could do all of these things, plus more, easily in a limited series, but in a two hour movie? It's inevitable that fans are going to feel shortchanged. The film just doesn't have the time to get through everything it wants to. It can still be saved. Chase has signed a deal with HBO for more projects and I am actively looking forward to A Many Saints Part 2, where hopefully all of these great actors come back and we can explore the characters further, perhaps show Tony's journey to becoming a made man, a sequel that explores his and Junior's relationship ending with the infamous Feech card game robbery. Some storylines like the Harold thing were left wide open. I really would not mind A Many Saints Part 2 and 3, but I think the best possible thing going forward even at this stage, is a limited series. The many saints of Newark having told the intentionally low-key and gritty story of the legendary Dickie Moltisanti and established the Sopranos world and setting, setting the stage for a new 10 episode or so series showing Tony's early life in the mob, while simultaneously telling other stories too. There really is a lot of potential still here that will go to waste without going back into the world of the Sopranos. You know, I made a video a couple of weeks ago called why did Carlo flip in The Sopranos? We all know why. His kid got done for drugs and he wanted to save his kid. But as I showed in that video, there was a lot more to it. There were numerous scenes showing that Carlo had become alienated from Tony. He didn't see him as a leader worth his salt. And that made Carlo's decision a lot easier for him. That is an undercurrent in the show, a subtext, an arc that isn't immediately obvious when watching. The richness of that particular storyline only becomes apparent upon seeing the show again. So imagine now The Many Saints, covered over the course of a TV season rather than a movie. And just think of all the possibilities, the added storylines, the subplots, the further exploration of the established characters, utilising those great actors like Vera Farmiga and Alessandra Nivola, utilising Christopher's narration too, which was such a great idea but nothing was done with it. So whilst I like the movie, I am frustrated and saddened, because ultimately they chose the wrong format. And plus, Chase, Alan Taylor, Terence Winter if they brought him along, these guys are TV guys, that's where they're at their best, they know the medium. Movies are different, and The Many Saints shows that. Still, I think a new show, or a few sequels, would be really good for The Sopranos, and they would improve the first film because they would build on things that Sopranos fans feel came and went too fast. The ending of the film felt like the perfect transition to a young Tony Soprano series, and I think Michael Gandolfini proved he can pull it off, plus he's the perfect age. I've got a video coming out soon on what a sequel could explore, so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss out. The ages of the characters was something difficult to wrap my head around, in particular Silvio and Paulie. The impression you get from the show is that Paulie is a lot older than Silvio and Tony, and Tony and Silvio are about the same age, with the two along with Jackie doing the card game and being fast-tracked to made men. That card game has yet to be depicted, so we'll see how it goes down in a sequel if it ever does happen, but it feels weird now, because Paulie and Silvio look the same age in the movie and Silvio is an established mobster while Tony is still in school. Does he get a crazy idea to rob a card game? and somehow manages to convince the gangster Silvio to come along for the ride, all while ignoring Paulie? It all feels a bit weird, and there really was no reason to make Silvio that old. And he even looks older because Magaro is constantly grimacing, showing his wrinkles. Just make Silvio around Tony's age, and replace the Silvio in the film with another character, maybe Pussy, or someone we never saw like Richie. They messed up Silvio in the film needlessly. I mean, what was it? Magaro was the only guy who managed to play Silvio convincingly in the auditions, and because he's so old they knew they couldn't get him to play a teenager? I don't know. I enjoyed the Harold storyline, as I mentioned in my review, but it feels like that story isn't over yet, 
And if we've only got one Sopranos movie for two hours, Harold's storyline should have been dropped entirely in favour of further explorations of characters like Dickie and Tony. See, that's the thing. I liked this film, I enjoyed it, but there wasn't enough. What was in it was more good than bad, but it left you wanting more, and not in a good way, in a frustrating way. Nobody would have complained about Harold's storyline, I don't think, if it was one of many subplots in a many saint season of television. But since it takes up such a major part of a movie that's only two hours long, is it really a mystery why many fans are wondering why there was so much focus on this guy when we came to see characters we know and love from The Soprano Show? Junior killing Dickie is surely the biggest talking point of the film. Again, I've got a more detailed video on this coming out soon, but this was so unexpected. We all thought it would be Johnny Boy, maybe Tony, maybe Harold as the film wanted us to think, or maybe he just wouldn't even die in the movie. But of all the people, it's Uncle Junior, that cagey fuck. He had us all fooled. And the more I think about it, the more I like this. It adds so much, it fits right in. There's just enough in the film to show us how jealous Junior is of Dickie. Just enough in this film which has so much crammed into it that Junior is an insecure guy and killing someone just because he laughed at you when you fell feels so in character to just how much of an insecure, weak, jealous bitch Junior was in season one. He's done similar things already like try and take out Tony over the Canilingus jokes and having Mikey Palmlees kill a guy over the way he talked. There's more to it than Dickie just laughing, of course. Dickie undermines him several times throughout the movie. And then there's that scene where Johnny Boy scolds him for not stepping up. Him taking out Dickie is so in character and it recontextualizes many scenes in the series. And again, I really want to see a sequel to the movie where Junior potentially takes Tony under his wing. Looks like Paulie was in on the hit too, because it sounded like his voice on the phone, maybe even Tony Sirico himself. It doesn't seem like Sylvia was in on it, that's the impression I got. And it seems the legend that Dickie was a junkie, this thing which haunted Chris for so much of his life, is a lie. It's all just a sad little irony since the drugs he was found with were for Livia. Dickie was actually trying to help Tony with his mother, and he tried to help Tony by keeping him away from the life, but Tony never understood. Dickie's untimely death halted everything, and instead, as the ending shows, Dickie's death is surely the catalyst for Tony going further into the mob lifestyle. If you think Junior killing Dickie was too undersold, too left field, let me remind you that the great Ruchi Priel was shot dead by his bride-to-be Janice before he ever really launched a campaign against Tony. Let me remind you of Ralph, such a great character who was killed ostensibly over a horse, and if you think it was too much of a petty reason to kill someone, you might have forgotten how petty Junior was in the show before he became everyone's favourite lovable couch potato. Even supposedly rational characters like Johnny Sack almost went to war just over a fat joke. The Sopranos is full of things which initially underwhelms, like the ending, but people talk about it years later. I'm not saying the many saints is in that bracket, but you know, only time will tell. Everyone is entitled to their opinion, of course, but I do feel a lot of the reactions have been, well, reactionary. And time will be kind to the movie, especially if there is more to come. We're kind of at that stage, just like after the show ended in 2007, where people are fuming and not in the right mood to explore the film via analysis. And again, everyone's within their right. You might disagree with the points I've made in this video, and like I've mentioned, it does have issues, mainly the lack of time, Silvio and some forced callbacks, plus the colour grading, which I didn't mention in my review but did talk about in my review of the trailer. But I did find things to enjoy. The ending of the film really shows that Junior doomed Tony into going down the road of the Mafia. Dickie would have probably laid out everything to Tony in their meeting, pushed him away from this thing of ours. He would have given Livia the medication which would have made her an easier person to live with for Tony. Instead, the only person who would have given Tony the love and nurture he needed was gone and he was left with narcissistic parents and an uncle who sucked him into the mob rather than push him away. And Christopher's final line highlights the cynical nature of abuse. He goes to hell because of Tony, and Tony will end up there because of Dickie. That's why the Woke Up This Morning song plays, which is the opening of The Sopranos of course. It's literally saying, this is where it all begins for Tony Soprano. There's a lot of stuff the movie does give us. Livia did love her son. She did not receive the love that a wife needs from a husband and she sought comfort in her boy, but her ego and issues created a wall between the two. 
Johnny Boy was not a nice person at all, very hostile and confrontational, emotional and unapproachable, definitely not the strong silent type. That was more dicky, but as the movie showed, he had his own problems too. So now that it's been a while since the release of the film and we've had time to let things sink in, what did you think of the movie? Do you think it could have been improved? Would you like to see a sequel? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching.